Hi, my name is Roman. I'm systems architect here at Veriwaz. Welcome to our Gainsight video series, where we take you into a deep dive into Gainsight's features and functionalities to help you successfully adopt, implement, and maximize your Gainsight investment. Today, in this first part of a two-part video series, I'll be walking you through the structural hierarchy available in Gainsight to organize your workflows and data to provide a great user experience and customer insight. Right, before we open Gainsight, I wanted to review the structural element that we have available to work with. So instead of Gainsight, you know, it's a database, uh, you have uh, buckets of information you're gonna put into certain objects. Those are gonna create records. Uh, how are you gonna structure all this? Uh, so to start with, I'm gonna start with the company uh, record. So to create a really big bucket, which is basically where all the company information is gonna go into. For brevity, I'm gonna call this the C360. Now, Inside of the C360, you can have multiple relationship. So it's the one too many relationship. Now it's different from um, the business sense of a relationship. This is like the gain side sense of a relationship. It means you have a one too many relation. Uh, so I'm gonna create that here and I'm creating multiple relationship here. And again, for brevity, I'm gonna call that R360, R360. Now fundamentally, the R360 and the C360 are very, very similar. They have uh, many of the same functions, um, but the idea is that, you know, you have one company, you have multiple relationship. So the relationship type can be different things. Most of them you'll find that the relationship type is the product. That doesn't mean that each individual product you have, you have to have a relationship type. Uh, so let me give you an example. If you're Microsoft and you're selling Windows and you're selling Office, you have two products, you can only create one, well, you can, you can choose to do what you want, but you create one relationship type, which would be product. And that relationship type can be the Windows or can be Office, that would be the title of it. Uh, you have a company, you sold both products, so they should have both relationship in the company itself. Now, the other element that is really interesting is the success plan. So like the R360, the success plan, you can have multiple of those into your company. So it could be like an onboarding and renewal as example. So two different success plans, you have to have both of them for the company. The interesting thing is the success plan can also be inside of the R360, like the C360. And for this that, you can also have multiple success plan in one R360. So you could have an onboarding for Windows, a renewal for Windows, and then you can have an onboarding for Office and and onboarding and renewal for office. The fourth element I wanted to talk about is the CTA. And the CTA is really interesting because you can do a lot of different things with it. Uh, the CTA, again, like the success plan and the relationship type, obviously you can have multiple CTAs into your company. You can have multiple CTAs. So just for CTA, CTA, CTA. You can have multiple CTAs inside of a relationship as well. And in a way, you can have also multiple CTAs inside of a success plan. Now I'm saying in a way because it's named differently, it's called the objective. In a database structure, they are, those objectives are built onto the call to action object inside of Gainsight. So it's kind of the same thing, same principle, different name. But fundamentally, you can have multiple objective into a success plan. So hopefully that helps you understand some of the elements you have to work with and how they actually work all together and they can be nested inside of them into one too many aspect. Now, what I did is I did quickly a board here to show you some of the features you have available in there. So inside of the C360, obviously it's the biggest one, you have most of the functionality and all the functionality is really advanced. So you have a custom layout, you can put different things inside of the C360. You have a timeline uh, of activities you can see. You have a cockpit, which is where all the CTAs, you could be able to find them. Uh, you can see the contact object. You can see uh, reports even. So you can actually load the reports in C360. So you can do a lot of things with it. The R360 is essentially the same thing. You have access to the same amount of information. Uh, you can have different custom layout as well in there. Now, the interesting thing is the CTA also has a lot of functionality in terms of uh, customizing it. So you can load different information from different objects. 
you can organize your field different ways. So that's why I would say they have a very large custom layout availability there. There's also a timeline of CCTA. So the interesting thing in the CTA timeline is it's, it's part of the global timeline, obviously. So anything you put on the timeline of CTA, you'll see it at the global level, but it's nested inside of the CTA, which means you have extra information to be able to filter out. You know, I just want to see timeline entries for that specific CTA. You can filter all that stuff because you can have extra element there. Uh, the thing you don't have for the CTA is obviously the cockpit because what's inside of the cockpit is the CTA. So the CTA does have its own cockpit. The CTA does have tasks, so that's something to think about. For the success plan, this is where it's kind of interesting. Like the CTA is actually really flexible. The success plan is not as flexible as I found it. Uh, you still have a timeline to work with, but one thing that the success plan has that the other element don't have is a can chart. So if you want to share that information with your customer, then you can actually say, this is the progress of your success plan and they can actually see that via can chart, which is pretty cool. And then the six plan has the cockpit in some ways as well. Like I said, the CTAs in six plan are called objectives. So just keep that in mind. So hopefully that gives you kind of a general layout of how things are structured of Gainsight, how you can use them. Again, just a very quick summary before we open Gainsight. The C360 is the big one. It's the company itself. So it's the, like the entity of your customer. Uh, the relationship could be the product. I remember again, I prefer one product type. So, and then name them differently. Uh, instead of multiple product type for each of the product. A lot harder to maintain that. You can have multiple products inside of the uh, C360, so one too many relationship. Same thing with the CTA, same thing for the SP, the success plan. Interesting thing is the CTA and the success plan can also be in the R360 as well as the C360. So you have to think about those things when you're going to provide you know, a solution to your user, where are they going to find that information? But you have to you have to think about that. If you're going to put success plan in R360, you have to know that they will need to go, you know, if they want to see the success plan, they need to go through the R360 to see it. Okay, I hope this is helpful uh, what I'm providing you as information. Let's move on to Gainsight. Now that we've quickly reviewed layers that we have available in Gainsight and how they fit together, let's open Gainsight and have a practical look at what we have to work with. So this video is a great timing. The 360 and the R360 layout and how you administrate those has recently changed, so we'll be able to learn something new here. Uh, and then quick note, since the C360 and the R360 essentially provide the same level of data organization and flexibility, I'm going to spend a little bit more time on the C360, most of which you'll see you'll be able to apply to the R360 as well. At the end of this portion of the video, we'll quickly review a gotcha regarding the relationship to be mindful of. So let's go to a company in our test environment here and pick up Nike. The first thing you'll notice is that the uh, tabs for the C360 has recently changed. It used to be on a, a vertical layout. Again, that has moved it to an horizontal layout. Beside the change, the functionality is the same. So instead of scrolling up and down, you have to scroll right to left. So here you, you can see there's quite a few tabs. This is a default, default layout. We have a lot of things because we're trying different things in our demo environments, but something to be really mindful of, and maybe that's something to think about as best, best practice is when I'm myself administrate or develop against that instance, I'm really mindful of the end user, right? And so the, the end user, that can be a CSM, could be an account manager, an executive perhaps, that need to be going to Gainsight and they need to be able to get information out of Gainsight. So this is why it's important to organize the right information and the right information means, you know, the information they need to do their job and that information needs to be there to drive activities. So useful activities to develop your business. Access to the information also needs to be simple if not intuitive. So that means that naturally you would want to go to a specific layer to get the information you need to get before you contact your customer. So all those things to be mindful of when you develop the platform, and then another thing as well to think about is that whatever you build, eventually you need to also maintain. So this is why I tend to like to use as much out of the box functionality as it's possible because heavy customization will lead likely to tech debt and tech debt is a scourge of you know, a two years plus old CRM system. So as much as possible out of the box, be mindful of how you organize your data and the data needs to be there because it's providing useful information that's going to drive activities. So, you know, in a CRM, you can loads, loads and loads of information. That's going to be too much perhaps for a person to look at. It's not really necessarily important for them to look at those things either. 
Okay, so just quickly review a few, few things to think about uh, and how you're going to organize it. When you open a C360, you have a few functions. We talked about that already on, you know, the timeline would be there, which essentially all the activities are related to your company. Uh, you have the cockpit, which is where all the CTA will be inside of the company itself. So now you're really looking at the company level information. So already the end user has moved from a dashboard or homepage and went to the company to get more information before they interact with that company specifically. A few things to call out in terms of the layout and the function you have available, something called the main attribute. This is a page that you can build on the company level, and it's going to show you like loads of information and as much information as you want. Now, again, you have to be careful, right? You don't want to put too much, but you want to put information that is actually useful. So as a executive, perhaps, and I'm looking at that company, I might want to know what the CSM is in this scale. It's my colleague, Paul, in a demo environment here. You might want to have more information such as, you know, more specific and ARR information. Be mindful that you also have that information at the default summary. The purpose of the attribute page would be to have more in-depth details uh, on that stuff. Something which, which is pretty cool as well is on the C360, if there are some reports that you know, you know are important at the C360, the company level, you can also add those and I'll show you how to build those in the layout later on. You can put some uh, website pages. So here, this is our VX framework page on our website. You can put that directly into the C360. Um, you could also put the company page as example. Uh, so I could have a Nike page as an example into that tab here. You can also do some iframing. So you can actually see some reports that are built in Tableau or in my case, Power BI. We can get information from there if you, and then you can interact and manipulate that information there as well. Of course, you can also have the scorecard. So I don't know if you have a scorecard. We do actually have a scorecard loaded here. Uh, so this information is also available. Again, it's all in C360, and you really want to make sure that the information you put there is information that an end user would actually go personally onto the company level of information and to get additional information. Now here as well, the people function, super helpful. It works really, really well out of the box in Gainside. Can't encourage enough people to use it. Uh, this is with all your contact that are associated with that specific company. Uh, just quickly go to the relationship as well. So the relationship page has changed also a little bit. And this is where you actually see the relationship. So I've created two relationships here from the Nike, a product one, which, product two, which is uh, the socks for Nike and the shoes here. So, and then when you click on the relationship, it's going to open the R360 it's a page. And as I said earlier on, you have the, essentially the same layout. You will have similar flexibility in how you organize your tabs here onto the R360 level. Now, let's quickly review. We've gone from the C360, which is the company level of information, and we went specifically to the relationship level. In this particular case, the relationship level is a product. So it's a relationship type is a product. Okay. Now let's quickly look at how things have changed here. So you used to go to the company to actually change the layout. That has changed. So they've introduced a new, okay, so that has new, introduced a new C360 layout. Super easy to get to it. Just go like this, C360. There we go. So this is where the, they have different type of layout to work with. In my case, I was looking at the default layout, uh, which is this one. And I quickly show you uh, a few of the items we were talking about. So one of the main attribute page, so this is this one here. Uh, you can configure it by clicking on it. And this is where you can actually put any field that is currently on the company object in there. So if you wanted to know, for example, which city this company is particularly, this is how you would do it. You click and drag the city and that information will be available on the attribute page itself, which is very cool. And another thing I wanted to quickly talk about was the embedded page. So the, the embedded page would actually be here. You would actually put, pop in the URL in there and this is how you would actually go to the right location and I would show you the right iframe for your C360 level of information. So I'll cancel that. Okay, so let's go to the data management here. So all this layout is actually related also to the data management. So the data management is at this point, we're looking specifically inside of the database of Gainsight. Uh, so if I go to the company object, the C360 information is all related to what's in the company object itself. 
this is where the company object is. And this is all the field that we created for that company object. So all those fields, all that information can be actually be put into the attribute page of Kensite. If you want to look at the data itself, this is how you would go about it. And then I can find the name of the company specifically regarding into the company database itself, the company object. Now that was looking at the uh, company object. We have a similar object, which is a relationship object here, which has a uh, a similar degree of information regarding the number of fields that are available or that can be used. A uh, quick note there is actually a lookup field to the relationship to the company. The relationship can see which company it's associated with. And if I go to the data here, I can see the relationship I had created earlier on for Nike. So if I search for shoes as example, this is my relationship here. So in a data management, and this is something you have to be mindful of. So you can actually go click on that one and delete the record itself. So when you do that, it's going to record, delete all that information. It's telling you, like, I'm going to, you know, you're going to lose all that information that is inside of the relationship itself. Click on delete and permanently, and now it's going to get deleted eventually. If I go back to Nike, and one layer up here, and I go back to the relationships, now only have one left. I've deleted the socks relationship. Now you saw the other oh, warning I got when I was deleting the shoes relationship. If I go to the shoe itself and select delete here, it's just gonna say delete everything. Click okay, and the shoe, that's gone. So there's something you have to be careful of. You, your end user will be able to delete relationship, so you want to remind them not to do it. Uh, the right way to delete the relationship would probably be from the data management, just because you get more warnings and, and only admi the administrator can do it. Okay, so from that, we'll be jumping to the next uh, layer of information. That would be the success plan, the CTAs. We'll review those in the next part of the series. Thank you. Kinsight provides several key structural hierarchies to utilize in organizing your data to deliver a great user experience for your team. Kinsight also offers a great degree of flexibility in how to structure your data for consumption. So far, we only have focused on the C360, R360, Success Plan, and CTS. When building your organization gets at instance, it is important to build a structure for your data to be easy to navigate, make sense for your business, it's easy to maintain, sustainable, scalable, and provide great insight for your company. If you have any question on how to structure your Gainsight instance and want to learn more, check out our resources section on ValueRise's website or contact our team of customer lifecycle and Kensat expert. Keep an eye out for the next video where we'll be sharing in-depth look into other Kensat features.